Hey folks, welcome to the end of month six update. Um, for those that don't know, these are just like little videos I like to do. Um, just to really talk openly and honestly, thoughts, feelings, how everything's changed, if things have changed, what am I positive about, what am I, you know, doing well about, or those kind of things. Um, today is a pretty miserable update, um, I suppose. Yeah, I'm not doing so great. To, to be completely honest, it's a bit, um, it's a bit of a sore one to talk about, but I'll, I'll try my best to talk about it. Um, so I've been trying to progress, right? Trying to like do small menial things that have been helping some things that are so small and menial that if I told you, you'd be like, bro, that is so embarrassing. What are you even doing? But all these small little menial updates to my, <laughs> brain software, <laughs> shall we say, do help, you know, whether it be trying something new, going somewhere new, pushing yourself out of your comfort zone, talking to somebody new, whatever it may be, right? Um, they all help. However, these past couple months have been pretty rubbish. A um, couple months ago, I lost my dog. Um, she was 13 and you know, the, the, as always, as everybody says about the pets, the kindest, etc. But genuinely, like, this dog was just so gentle, so kind, and it, it was a, it was a shock, um, death. We weren't expecting it. It kind of just happened out of the blue, and within a few days, she was gone. And, you know, that takes a time to process. It's grief. It's some, something, someone, a family, because they're, they're a family member that's, that's been in your house 13 years and then they pass and they're just not there. You know, the house is a bit quieter. And then it was building up to my birthday and I always struggle. I always struggle around my birthday time because I always, I always feel like it's another marker of a year has passed. Where are you? What have you done? And I find that challenging and difficult and I don't enjoy birthdays. I know some people do and I know some people also hate their birthday. I've never done anything for my birthday. I always hate my birthday. So it's just something I don't look forward to. Um, <clears throat> As well as all of that going on, obviously there's been stuff going on in the background. Some of you may know from the streams or the update videos. I won't go into a whole host of it, but Basically, since January, I split with a girl, and yeah, I, I split up with her. You know, it, it wasn't going well. I really, really liked the girl, but it just it just wasn't going well. The things that were been done, said, yada, yada, I'm not going to get into it. And I feel like I finally kicked that, and I've, I feel okay. Yesterday, I was bored, and I did the terrible thing of opening up a dating app and I saw her on there and I won't go into too much detail but you know like you can uh, post your profile you can post like things and stories and images and they have captions well her captions were let's just say asking for number one oh I think it said something along the lines of um, I'm looking, my idea of relaxation, my idea of like a perfect life is relaxa relaxation and I'm looking for somebody that can talk emotionally and I'm, I love emotions. And well, this is a girl that if I ever spoke about my emotions, how I feel about her or how she's making me feel or good or bad, it was always met with just like, hey, listen, bro, um, I cannot talk emotionally, so don't talk to me about these things. I can't do it the end and so I guess after like all these months have passed I, I, I just kind of chuckled to myself and moved on I just thought that is just ridiculous and I don't know if anyone's ever done this but like when they finally moved on from somebody yesterday I kind of thought to myself I don't know why you I'll tell you why in a second but I, I tried to like force some feelings if that makes sense and so I tried to think about this person and how much I liked them and how much they meant to me and how how, how many good times we spent together because we spoke and we met and we, we had like three years and I just couldn't feel anything. And it was a really surreal experience because that person at some point meant so much to me 
and now I just feel like, wow, like, number one, I can't believe how, like, wrong you did me. And number two, like, I just don't feel anything. And the reason this happened, which is the sad news, is my other dog passed away. And that dog was 16. And the reason I'm telling you about this is slightly religious. Um, I have been trying to find a bit more faith. I am... Um, well, I was brought up religious and when I sort of hit adulthood and all of that, I sort of lost my faith. But over the past few years, I've been trying to find it a little bit. I know that's not for everybody. I get it. Um, but the, 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 this dog, so for those that don't understand, um, and I'm very open here and I hope you appreciate that because it's not easy to talk about. I was pretty much, well, I was agoraphobic to like 20 like 7 like I, I couldn't leave the house I couldn't do anything it was very very difficult I've spoke about it on stream on videos before people don't really understand it but it's very very difficult and it's something that I've worked on getting better at etc and so for this this dog I can't even bring myself to say her name um she was there basically since I was wow probably 14 and so for my whole life, uh, always in the house, always with her. Um, so like totally bonded. Like this this dog is like, I've never had a bond with some something like that. Like I could tell that the dog genuinely liked me. And I know all my other dogs have liked me, but this is like a different dog. Like that. Like if whether I was like whether I was editing Gears Five or whatever, she'd come upstairs. She'd want to sit with me whilst I edit. She'd want to like fall asleep on me. There was just like it was just lovely. Like uh, I have no, never have a bad word to say. Like very fun dog, everything. Like and so she also has been not so great these past few years, and that's not been very nice to see because there's not much you can do. We tried to give her a good quality of life. She went deaf. Then she kind of had like a bit of dementia. Then she had like bad teeth and like we've been trying all sorts with her food for so long. Like basically I've been cooking like home meals for her so she can eat them. And then she kind of got some heart problems. Well, that's kind of how she passed, we believe. But um, could even be cancer more, more than likely, to be honest. Um, and I knew that she was getting ill. And I had a really strange experience. Um, I had a really strange experience where a couple, well, a couple days before, I I felt that she was going to pass away. There was no real, there was no real signs or no real, um, yeah, no real signs. But I just, I just felt it. Um, and then, like the next night, I I literally prayed in my room, and I was like. Yeah, I just want you to look after her. Like, but when my when my other dog died, it wasn't very pleasant, and it's unfortunate because that dog was like the kindest dog ever, and she passed in a in a in a pretty awful way. It was probably painful. Sadly, there was blood, there was coughing, there was she passed in the night. Nobody found her until the morning, and it just wasn't nice. It wasn't nice to to see her like that, you know. Obviously, and so I was like if my dog does pass away, just make sure that it's not horrible, basically, you know, that's that's all I'm asking for, you know. And the next day she started to become quite ill, which was a bit strange. Um, she was ill, she was having a bit of raised breathing, but she began to breathe really fast and nothing we could do could really settle her. And then, so the next night I said, okay, you know, like, I, I, she's probably going to pass away and I asked for the same thing again and I went to bed really really late and I think I went to bed really really late because I just knew that I just knew she was going to pass away in us like in the night and I was going to have to wake up to it and I just wasn't ready for that so I, I stayed up dead late um and then and then it was about one o'clock it was about one o'clock I came downstairs my mum my mum kind of said before I came downstairs she was kind of like she's not in a good way like really really not in a good way just you know to pre-warn me and I, and I kind of already knew it and suspected it and what's so bizarre about the situation and 
is when I came downstairs, it was like she was waiting for me. It was really bizarre. So she's breathing really, really fast on the couch. And then she kind of looked at me and my parents went in the garden. And within a minute, she, she, I, I've, you know, this is, it could be coincidence. It's just how dogs pass away. I know, but she genuinely looked up to the sky she like looked she looked at me and she totally looked up at the sky and this is the the truth like i i have no reason to lie about this it was pretty traumatic and within within 20 seconds she just you you saw the light switch off in her and then she just curled up into a ball and began to breathe really really slow and i kind of i kind of sat there for like 20 seconds thinking you know just trying to process everything that just happened and then i went into the garden and i said I, I I think she's passed away or is literally about to pass away. And then I kind of just watched her and she wasn't breathing fast. She wasn't struggling for breath. She wasn't coughing or been sick or pulling any weird faces. And then she just, she just passed away. And it was just, it was just, uh, <clears throat> this happened on Friday so it's still pretty sore. It will be sore for a long time, but you know, <coughs> it was it was literally like she waited the entire night to see me. Like she wanted me to see her. It's like she hung on to the point of where she could see me, and it was like I had to see that she wasn't in pain. And it could just be that's the way she died, you know. She looked up to the sky, which lots of dogs do. She had a heart attack and then it was peaceful. Could It could have just been that. But it was just very, very strange because I don't really pray at all. Um, and so that was, there was a lot to take in. And I just, you know, I said a few words and I just said to my mum and dad, like, I'm just going to have to go for a drive. They were like, oh, should you drive when you're really upset? You know, and I was like, listen, like, I just have to get out. Like, it was a really, really strange, painful, surreal experience. And that happened on Friday and I'm recording this on Sunday. So it's still very raw. Um, and so I went out for a walk in just the tr absolute torrential rain and maybe it was a silly idea, but I walked to the route that I normally would walk with her. And that obviously got me really upset. Not a good idea. And I was thinking to myself, like, these two animals that I've lost, 16 and 13 years, you know. Um, it's like, I feel like, yeah, that's what, that's what losing somebody that you really care about feels like, you know. And me losing that girl, it wasn't like that. It was a different kind of pain. It was like a how how dare you have wronged me, pushed me away. But it wasn't like, wow, I loved this girl unconditionally and this this girl loved me and, uh, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, And so if, if anything, it gave me a bit of perspective. And I feel like these past six months have just been just an incredible amount of lessons and perspective. Um, and so I, I, this, this month, the August and uh, the August and start of September kind of dropped on the stuff that I was doing and I've not been in a good place really. <clears throat> um, I bought a new webcam as some kind of retail therapy. I'll have to set that up, so we'll see if the webcam's any better. Um, but yeah, I also got my hair cut. Um, it's not quite perfectly straight, but I got my hair cut to a point where I can wear it down. I got some layers in my hair. I still tie my hair up 99% of the time, but I quite like the way my hair is at the moment, which is uh, I haven't liked it for quite some time, so that's a positive. Um, it's just been a really, really shitty, shitty couple of months. Um, and yeah, the, 
if anyone's ever been in a relationship and they really, really liked someone and they were just pushed and pushed and pushed away until you basically had to roll over and accept a relationship that wasn't really very good for you or you walk away. When you walk away, it's really, really difficult, especially like when you kind of ask them to fight for you and then they just kind of like blase chuck you away like you were nothing despite spending literally like three years talking to each other daily so that was a lot to process and they say it takes roughly half the time you know them to get over them which is probably about right now um, which is probably why I feel sort of okay about the whole situation and probably why I can talk about it but I don't even want to talk about her on the channel or anything like that that's private stuff it's, it's just unfortunate because it was a lovely, lovely time, lovely girl. Um, and I think I'm at a point now where I'm, where I'm, uh, I don't have any grudge or anything like that. I just think, well, you know, that, that, that like it happened. It was a period of time. We move on, you know, um, if like I, I, I always said to my friend, like, because I walked away because a lot of stuff happened. Um, for me to go back, the, the person would have to contact me, kind of explain a few things that were very, very confusing to me. And that obviously never happened. Um, and so it's not up to me to go and chase back. And it's not up to me to go and find answers, you know. And for a long time, I tried to find answers. But I mean, the reality is the answer is the fact that they didn't fight and they didn't come back for you. So, you know, that's how it is. Um, it's an unfortunate situation, you know, when you get older, especially it's hard to meet anybody nice these days that doesn't have kids or is on the same wavelength as you or is very understanding. The dating scene these days is frankly barbaric and it's not something I'm even considering taking part in at the moment. I'm just, you know... If I'm destined to be on my own and old, then I'll be on my own and old. But I'd rather, li I genuinely would rather be on my own and old than be stuck with someone that is not right. Um, totally, and I mean that genuinely. Like, if you get being with the wrong person, actually, is way more, way more harmful than being on your own. Um, but yeah. Uh, also, to to end the video, if anyone's still here, <clears throat> um, let's hope that the rest of the month and year picks up a bit. It's just going to take a few... It's just going to take some time for me to drag myself out of this m metaphorical pit, so to speak. Um, and... It's five years, you know. It's five years since Gears War released, I think, yesterday or the other day or something. How crazy is that? Five years, it... it you know, like what's you know what's really really bizarre about this whole situation is I came back to YouTube for Gears Five randomly. I just posted a rant on a on a dead YouTube channel that I've not used in years, and it's been a decade since then. And when I came back, I felt like I was really really old. I don't know why I was posting to YouTube, and I was like twenty five or something, and it's like wow, a decade has passed. And then I had the whole COVID thing in the middle. Um, to, to, to be totally honest with you, uh, genuinely, I, I think since 20, well, 2020, what was that? COVID? Probably 2021, I started to talk and meet the girl. Probably since 2021, I've had like the best and yet the most stressful time of my life, which is not good. <laughs> um, I think if you look back, uh, probably to 2020 on my channel, I feel like if I was to look at myself then and now, I feel like I'm doing so much better. But it just doesn't feel like that because it's just been blow after blow after blow. <clears throat> And I'm not very good on the self-analyzing, but I mean, when I started, I suppose when I started YouTube in the Gears 5 days, like, I could barely leave the house. I had, I had just nothing, man. It was such a bad period of time. Um, 
yeah and then like i've tried to build myself up to a point now <clears throat> but um wow yeah it's just been a it's actually been a it's been a crazy five years and i feel like not much has happened that's what's so bizarre about the whole situation it's been a crazy five years and not much has happened i don't really know how to process that but there has been a lot happened but there hasn't um So yeah, <clears throat> uh, at some point I'm going to have to sort my phone out, get all my pictures and videos of my pets, probably back them up and store them somewhere. I don't think I'm ready to do that yet. Um, yeah, it's just been a really, really, I will, I generally, like, I don't. I don't often wallow in self-pity on YouTube, but it's genuinely been pretty shitty few months. Um, recently, I've started to play chess, not at any high level. I'm at a complete, complete, complete beginner's level, like baby level chess. But I've, I've enjoyed that a little bit. Um, sometimes been streaming that. Uh, managed to sort my eyes out yesterday. New contact lenses, new glasses, went to the opticians, cost me a bomb annoying frustrating but you know when you when you're blind as anything you need to see so hopefully i'll get my new prescription and things will be looking sharper on the road because now that i'm driving shouldn't really have vision that's not as good as it should be um that's it really i know that's not a very exciting or interesting or positive video is it but um, that's the reality at the moment, unfortunately. So we're just hanging in there. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's just carry on plodding away. I'm not even going to say let's hope month seven, eight, nine, ten are fantastic. Uh, we're just going to say let's just keep plodding on and see what happens. Take care and uh, thanks for listening.